Have you ever wondered why a large ship floats but a small pebble sinks? In this video, we'll learn about floating, sinking, pressure and density. Density is a measure of how heavy something is relative to its size. It can be calculated using this equation. Try calculating the density of a wax candle that has a volume of 2 cm3 and a mass of 1.9 grams. Pause the video to work it out. We can use density to predict whether an object will float or sink when it's placed in a liquid. If the object is more dense than the liquid, it will sink. If the object is less dense than the liquid, it will float. Water has a density of 1 gram per cubic centimetre. Will the wax candle with a density of 0.95 grams per centimetre cube float or sink in water? That's right, the density of the candle is less than the density of water, so it will float. Lead has a density of 11.3 grams per cubic centimetre and liquid mercury has a density of 13.5 grams per cubic centimetre. What would happen if a block of lead were placed in a beaker of liquid mercury? Pause the video while you think. The lead would float in the liquid mercury. So that's a fairly easy way of explaining why solid blocks float or sink. There is another thing to consider. Buoyancy force. All liquids are made up of particles that can slide over each other. When the particles collide, pressure is produced. The pressure in a liquid varies with depth and density and gravitational field strength. In a column of liquid, the water will pour out through the holes in the side of the container. The water that pours out of the hole at the bottom of the container travels further than the water that pours out of the hole at the top. This is because the water at the bottom of the container is under greater pressure than the water at the top. The mass of the particles pushing down on the water at the bottom of the container creates more pressure. The deeper the liquid, the greater the pressure. We can use these facts to derive the formula. Where P equals pressure, Rho equals density, H equals depth and G equals gravitational force. Imagine a cuboid submerged in a tank of liquid. The distance from the surface of the liquid to the bottom of the surface of the box is greater than the distance from the surface of the liquid to the top of the surface of the box. So H2 is bigger than H1. Because P equals rho G H, the pressure on the bottom surface due to the liquid must be greater than the pressure on the top surface. This results in there being more force on the bottom surface of the box than there is on the top surface. The difference between these two forces cause there to be a net force upwards called the buoyancy force or upthrust. If the buoyancy force is greater than the weight of the object, the object will rise up through the liquid. If the buoyancy force is less than the weight of the object, the object will sink. If the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the object, the object will still float. Atmospheric pressure. The pressure of the air is related to the weight of the air above. As we increase altitude, so distance from the Earth, there is still air above us, but there becomes less air as we go further away from the Earth. So air pressure decreases as we increase altitude, until we get to the edge of the atmosphere where there is no more air and so there is no pressure. Most of the atmosphere's molecules are close to the Earth's surface, thanks to gravity. And so the air pressure decreases rapidly at first as we increase altitude, and then more slowly at higher levels. This is why the air in the mountains is thinner, and sometimes mountain climbers need oxygen to breathe. In fact, the pressure at the top of Mount Everest is less than 30% of the pressure at sea level. So, there we have the many reasons why the atmosphere is so important and why the atmospheric pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with altitude. Who didn't like playing in ball pits when they were a child? Now let's imagine a room filled with these balls constantly moving around in different directions. This is how molecules in a gas move. In this video, we're going to discover more about amazing gases and the effect temperature and pressure have on them. Have you ever wondered why the cork explodes out of a champagne bottle? Or the fizz when you open up a shaken bottle of Coca-Cola? This is all to do with gas and pressure building up inside the bottles. So let's have a look at pressure and gases in a little more detail. Gases exert a pressure on any surface which they are in contact with. The more particles that hit the walls of the container, the higher the pressure. Like when you shake a Coke bottle, and as it fizzes, the bottle feels harder than before. 
This is the gas particles pushing against the plastic bottle. So we have the equation, pressure is force per unit area. We also see the effect of pressure in gases when we blow a balloon up too much and it pops. This is because we've increased the pressure of the air molecules pushing against the rubber balloon too much. Heating also increases pressure. Why is that? As a gas is heated up, the particles gain more energy and move around more quickly. They then hit into the walls of the container harder and more often. This understandably increases the pressure, and if the pressure is too great, the container can burst. Again, think of popping balloons and bursting tires. Ever read on your deodorant can a warning that says not to leave it in the sun? This is because inside the can is a gas, and as we just discovered, heating up a gas causes the pressure to increase and can result in that can exploding. Not a good idea. So what happens if we then cool down the gas? This time, the particles have less energy, and so less pressure is being exerted on the container, which is why balloons shrink and become sad and saggy. Now, it's time for something none of us like. Needles and syringes. Thankfully, there are no injections for us today. We're just learning that needles and syringes work due to pressure in gases. When the plunger of a syringe is pulled out, it causes the volume in the chamber to increase. This increased volume causes the pressure inside to decrease. Now we have created a vacuum that wants to repressurize to normal atmospheric levels. Since it's a sealed system, except for the needle into your arm, the only fluid available is your blood, which gets sucked into the chamber. Your blood then reduces the volume, and so the pressure increases back to normal. Pause the video and fill in the missing words. Did you get them right? So there we have the effects of volume, temperature and molecules on the pressure of a gas. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I'll see you next time.